Okay. Based up in Clare somewhere. They're fantastic. <laughs> Next time you see him, I'll have employee flex in the background there. That's it, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Pimp yeah. out your office. Exactly. I think everybody kind of gave up on the the Zoom virtual backgrounds, you know, after about yeah. a week of them being entertaining, everybody just went, oh, fuck that, like, yeah. <laughs> we're on too many meetings as it is. Um, I was only saying, uh, Paddy and John, I was only saying, I, I came in, well, I was talking to you a few minutes ago, John, but uh, I came in today to meet some builders and stuff, and I just, I can't decide, I'm telling everybody that I'm staying for the Wi-Fi, but really it's <laughs> the fact that I'm pretty sure after this I'll be able to get Deliveroo and eat something that I haven't, you know, <laughs> Get something that like I haven't been eating for about a month and a half since I since uh, Republic of Work shut down. Yeah, so, uh, not a feeling. Yeah, Bunsen I think is going to be the winner tonight. You know, <laughs> we don't have much choice here now in Clonakilty. I'm I'm jealous of you living in urban areas. Yeah, <laughs> a, I, my problem is, is that I live literally right next to a really really good chipper, so I I have to actually. <laughs> go, once a week, that's it. If you see me more than once a week, throw me out. You know. <laughs> Well, I can see KC's, and I look oh. just in the distance, I can see KC's, which is bad. That's bad news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, that's a funny one, because, like, how, <laughs> I don't even know how social distancing in KC's would work, you know, that might say anything else. Yeah, well, I suppose they, they, they did it at the beginning of the, the, the onset of, of it, they, they, they had to close it down, because it was, uh, it was, like, uh, huge crowds of people arrived. Yeah. We couldn't it. so that that was part yeah so yeah fucking hell we're getting there um let me just see how we're getting on um hi everybody so um we'll have to be polite now no more swearing people because there's now <laughs> attendees on the call <laughs> um we'll just give people a few minutes there to to join us so we'll, we'll just ramble on about what we're rambling on about um yeah, don't feel like Paddy. Just just because you're the only Dublin person on the call there now, like don't feel there'll be no picking on Dublin here. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll refer <laughs> to our capital, now, you know? we'll refer to our capital yeah. city with the. Uh, I was afraid to come down here to Cork virtually. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? yeah. <laughs> like I mean, with the greatest of respect, last month we had we had Jamie Heaslip last month. And uh, not only did we have like a, a Leinster rugby player, but we actually had an ex Munster rugby player on the oh, call. Geez. And it all stayed very polite. And it was uh, civil, was it? It was very civil, yeah. Very civil. Yeah, thanks. Well, you know, I'm always slightly on edge here, you know, but uh, <laughs> probably a good thing. Yeah. Um, look, sure, we might, I mean, in the end of the day, the great thing about these things is we let people drop in and out and stuff. So we might start away. Um, guys, uh, for those of you on the call, Thanks so much for joining us this evening for, um, I'd love to say I'm after forgetting what month it is, uh, May, <laughs> yep. So it's, when, it's a Wednesday in May, just here. At the moment, I, how I find out what day it is, I go out to Twitter every morning and Innocent Smoothies have put out a tweet every morning reminding you what day it is. That's pretty much the only way I remember what day it is at the moment. But thank you for joining us for May's Built in Cork. Um, tonight we're going to tackle... Um, we're going to tackle remote working, but I, I think what, I, what we'd like to do is we'd like to maybe move the conversation on a little bit from, you know, isn't it great that we're all remote working to maybe look at, you know, is this a flash in the pan? Is it going to be there? Um, is it going to be? <laughs> is it, thanks, John. That's definitely going to come up. Um, is it going to be there in the future? How is it going to change? You know, how is it going to affect? So you know talk about the future as opposed to the past um and we couldn't have uh, a more distinguished panel um uh we couldn't have a more distinguished uh panel with us this evening uh because we it covers a whole pile of stuff i guess look starting in the order which i can see you um we've got our old friend karen o'reilly karen from employ mom slash employ flex so um you know pretty much at the same time Republic of Work kicked off. Um, Karen became a regular on the scene here, first of all, just in Cork. And now obviously the business has expanded across Ireland with offices in Limerick and uh, pretty sure Dublin or soon to be Dublin as well. Um, so Employfex specialize as our, our, I guess our kind of a, we call you a recruitment plus um, mm -hmm. in that not only do they obviously work to, to 
help companies find remote employees, but they very much work on the policy side as well, showing the companies how they can take advantage of the, the, the remote work community that's out there. Um, next we have Gavin O'Brien. Gavin is the Chief People Officer in my old alma mater teamwork. Um, before he went to work for a bunch of madmen, he had a very distinguished corporate career um, running HR in places like Zendesk and PepsiCo, where I'm sure he probably wore a suit more often than he does now. Um, but trying to keep, you know, the 200 and, I don't know what, 260, 70 odd people in yep. teamwork uh, sane during this time is something that I have just boundless amounts of respect. I'm sure we'll hear more about that later. Um, my brother from another mother, uh, Mr. Paddy Patrick Walsh from uh, the CEO of Dogpatch Labs in Dublin, um, obviously Ireland's largest tech hub, um, and also, you know, just bang in the middle of everything going on in the startup scene here in Ireland. Be very interesting. The unique thing about dog patches, as well as obviously catering for startups, they're engaged with a massive amount of corporates, and obviously then are the Irish part of the Google Tech Hub network. So would have deep relationships with the large majority of the world's global uh, tech hubs. Um, so it'd be interesting to see kind of how they're reacting to everything. And last, but certainly not least, uh, remote workings champion in Ireland, um, Mr. John Reardon. Uh, John is the, um, John, I always get your title wrong. Are you the global director of support or is that too fancy? Um, That's, uh, you're, you're, you're giving me delusions of grandeur. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Um, John's some dude who works for Shopify and um, <laughs> obviously awesome. loves their branding. Um, John, since the day I've met him, John has, has that's John has a career ranging from Shopify to some, I don't know, some crowd up in Holly Hill. Um, they, they sell phones or something. Um, uh, I think you were, was it in, in Apple you worked on the, uh, was the online store side of the business? Um, yeah, yeah, I used to run the customer service section for sales and service for the online store. Yeah. So John has a pretty long track record of, um, of uh, remote working here in Ireland because Shopify obviously are have a huge operation here in Ireland, but are kind of unique in the fact that, you know, they, they don't call any one particular building home here in Ireland. It'd be very interesting to see an organization of their size that, that essentially works completely remote here in Ireland. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I guess, look, the first thing that, that I kind of wanted to, to ask you, maybe, maybe I might ask you one at a time, like we're a number of months now into this whole thing, and I suppose I'd be just curious to kind of say, look, you know, we were all people who before this whole thing, we all knew what remote working was. Um, the one thing I'm finding a lot is that, you know, it's that whole thing of, is this really remote working? Or is this people working from home in a crisis? You know, like the, the companies you're interacting with, like how are they finding, you know, are your own businesses? Like how are you finding the whole working from home experience? Um, is it, is it everything that, uh, that you thought it was going to be? John, you can cheat this one. But Karen, I mean, from your perspective, like you're, you're, a relative, I mean, you're a relatively small company like ourselves. I mean, how have you found the whole experience of interacting, I suppose, with your customers and with your colleagues and all that sort of stuff, kind of, you know, from your house? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I have been working remotely for a long, long time. Um, so as you said, this isn't normal remote work conditions. You know, this is working from home in a, in a pandemic with all the distractions that are there, you know. So like I've got two teenagers now and, and uh, my third child, my husband uh, on board here. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're dragging and pulling off me all day long, like which normally I would have a straight run of eight hours to work, you know. So, so that's a huge difference for me, but now they're fairly well behaved most of the time, but like people with smaller kids are finding it very difficult, I think, who are expected by their employers to have the same level of productivity. And they, um, you know, that's just impossible if you, if you are a sole parent, maybe your, your partner is at work and you're at home on your own and you're trying to maintain that level of productivity. Um, it's very difficult and very stressful for a lot of, of parents. Um, I, th I hope uh, that um, employers, and I've spoken to a couple of clients who are saying, oh, you know, my staff aren't as productive as they would be if they were in the office. And look, of course they're not, you know, because number one, they weren't trained to work from home. And number two, they have all these distractions. So what we're really hoping here is that 
employers aren't going to use this as an excuse like AC after COVID to say, well, you know, my staff weren't as productive as they usually are, you know, because this isn't normal working from home, no. you know, so um, that would be our main concern with, and we're hearing that a bit from clients, like the, no. the resistant clients, the ones who would have been always resistant to it. This yeah. is what they're saying now. This is the narrative we're getting back, you know. So. Yeah, it is going to, I mean, I was talking to somebody today and they were saying, look, one of the biggest challenges facing the return to work is, you know, the fact that like the, the whole childcare situation and all that sort of stuff, like it's going to be very hard for people to return to an office environment, you know, if every school in the country is closed, do you know what I mean? So it, it that's definitely going to present a challenge. Gavin, I mean, you know, I, I know, you know, what was great about teamwork was that there was always a remote sense to it because there was all like from the earliest days of teamwork you know there were a couple of people in australia new zealand and there were a couple of people here and a couple of people here but suddenly you know you you may you have this huge investment in these world-class offices and then suddenly you know I, i'd imagine you had to be the bad cop who kind of locked the front door on everyone i mean with the size of the operation like how how have you found it in these kind of the the first months you know yeah, so I suppose uh, we have uh, we, we have a, a good track record of, of people working remotely. We've uh, at the minute we've two hundred and seventy staff, uh, and they're spread across a combination of hub offices, uh, which we would have. Um, we now have eight of those hub offices, and then we've got about twenty percent of our staff then work uh, what we call true remotely, as in they're 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 not working in in a hub office, and they're either working from home or they're in a co working space. Uh, that they're uh, that they're sharing with others. So I suppose for us, uh, then this situation has presented a, a, a time when you you now have your your total workforce are are doing working remotely and not by choice. And I think this is the big thing that's the, the, the differential here is that it's not by choice for many people and for the majority of people who who find themselves in this situation. And I think the other thing is just worth noting is that you know. Uh, Remote working is just not about the location that you're working from. It's about uh, all of the supports that need to be in place, for, you know, to, to, to help that. So uh, just if you're working from, from home, uh, you know, occasionally is, is, is great. And if that meets your flexibility and that meets your, your needs on a short term basis, that, that, that's absolutely fine. Uh, and I think uh, it's not about is, is, is remote working the way forward or is, it, is office hubs the way forward? I think it's a combination of both of those. And it's the middle ground that meets the needs of individuals. We, you know, Karen talked about the, you know, the needs of, of families, the needs of carers, et cetera. That's very important. Uh, so I think what, what the current situation has done, is I think it's opened up many employers' minds to the, the concept that they would have thought about jobs that oh, they possibly couldn't have been done uh, remotely. We need people in an office. We need people working together. There's advantages to that, obviously, to have people co-working uh, together in the same space. Uh, but there's also advantages for the individual and for the company yeah. having people working at home. Uh, but you, companies need to invest in the, the supports around that in terms of policies, communication tools, software to enable uh, co correct collaborative working. It just doesn't happen by the virtue of people not being in the same location. Yeah. And companies have to work at it. Paddy, um, I suppose, you know, you and me are in similar circumstances in that, you know, on a daily basis, we run something that's like a cross between an office, a hotel, and an, an asylum. Um, and you know, our like, you know, the team in asylum. Yeah. The teams <laughs> that, you know, the teams at Republic of Work and Dog Patch, you know, we're used to, you know, we're used to being on our feet all day every day. We're used to being running around, interacting with members, communities and stuff. And you know, then suddenly like my team go home and your team have, you know, gone home. I mean, from your point of view, like from a from a business perspective, like how have you found, because I mean, I suppose there's, there's a lot of people who would assume that, you know, because we run spaces and because we're very involved in the flexible work world, suddenly, you know, we should roll into this. But I mean, it is, it's, it's a tricky environment, you know, I mean, we're, we're definitely learning, you know, an awful lot about the product, I suppose, that, that, that we have at our disposal. I mean, how have the, the team at Dogpatch found the whole remote work experiment, you know? Yeah, we got we had a team about 20 in Dogpatch or 17 or so, and um yeah, I mean, there was definitely this big transition for us. I mean, we had one remote working uh, team member who always kind of felt like a little bit of an outsider. And um, they're like, for them, it's brilliant because now everyone's on the same playing field. And yeah. we definitely discovered that like um, like part remote remote teams 
are 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 let or where there's a subsection of of a team that's remote yeah. that does not def, it, it definitely works a lot better if everyone is just remote because then you're all dialing in you're all you know what i mean so that was an interesting sort of thing that happens um we found our form you know um we do a, a stand up on a monday we touch base on a on a wednesday and a, and a friday company wide etc um, so, so, so we kind of found our form and, and that's helped us inform other team members. I think what's interesting now is, um, I was reading Jack Dorsey, uh, from Twitter, uh, yesterday just said, um, uh, all staff members can work from home forever if they want, you know, and I think definitely what we're starting to see, or even think about it in, in our own team, but also in, in our community is that people are starting to make the distinction of the team members that are not coming back to work that they, they, they just like remote working. And so like we had one company call us up and say, um, there you are. <laughs> um, so, so, so people are starting, I was just saying DC that, you know, that Jack Dorsey kind of said that, um, you know, he just made the announcement that across Twitter, you can work from home forever now and they'll give you that investment to set up your office, et cetera. And I, I was chatting to one of our bigger companies in, in Dogpatch and they've, they've said it's kind of a similar thing where they said, look, Patty, we're probably going to only need eight, like, like eight out of 10 of the desks that we had because we've now made a distinction that two of our team members just will not be coming back yeah. because that's, it really suits them. So that's kind of interesting where people are starting to make those distinctions. And then equally, there's, other, there's, there's, there's distinctions that I'm making in the team where it's like, they definitely want to come back, you know? And it's, it's we're starting to, because the experiment has now existed for two months for two people. And some people have really, you know, it, we didn't have a, not, a long enough time scale before this to kind of really understand if this was your new habit and you liked it. So that's been interesting for us to kind of make a distinction between who who do we think is coming back, um, and um, and and um, and who definitely doesn't want to come back, but 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 the, but the, the big challenge for us now is 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 how will we come back? Because right now we're being told there needs to be two meters, uh, you know, between every desk. For us in Dogpatch, because we kind of you know it's a it's a co-working space, that we're we're seeing that as maybe 30, 40 percent of our capacity. So, yeah. so, so now we're getting into these conversations of you're going to have to rotate teams. So you'd like to have half your, your, you know, your team coming in for one week and the other. So this is going to be really complicated as to like yeah. how you're going to come back. I, I, I don't even know how that's going to work. We're still trying to wrap our head around it, but um, very, very complex. So anyway, yeah, there's just some general thoughts. So we, we have at least two members that are not coming back. In yeah, well, they're just I, I, delighted. They're sitting out in Kerry and they're loving it. Like, you know, I have one member who's definitely coming back and that's our office dog, Kaylee, who's had to obviously isolate with me for six weeks and is completely fed up and now just wants to come back to, she's used to having, you know, a hundred odd people fawn over her every day, you know, and is just tired of me now at this stage. Um, but thank God, finally, we all have all the questions and now we can come to the man who has all the answers for us because, of course, Shopify have been operating remotely in Ireland for years. So, John O'Riordan, John O'Riordan, um, John, I mean, like, you've been very gracious about not being the company that came out and coming out saying, I told you so about all this. Um, because obviously, look, we, I mean, I've seen how you operate. I mean, you might just, just to give people context, you might, um, you might give, give people an idea of Shopify in Ireland and like how, how you essentially operate, you know? Okay. Uh, we, thanks, TC. <clears throat> We've over 400 people in Ireland and we have resolutely got no office and we're going to keep it that way. And that's given us a tremendous advantage. We have a similar setup in our support operations in New Zealand and in Canada. So pretty much our whole support operation around the world, which is close to 2,000 people, is almost all at home. We have some folks who are based in some in a couple of our corporate offices where an element of co-location with dev teams is required. But you know, we're set we're talking 90, let's say 90% of our of our support organization is uh, is remote. But there's a really interesting distinction, right? Because What's happening in the last seven or eight weeks, and then Karen alluded to it as well, is we're, this is not remote work, 
Okay, and I, 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 somebody shared with me earlier on today some uh, work, remote working principles under COVID-19. And they're very different to all of the remote work that we used to talk about. So I'll just, I'll just if, you don't, if you don't mind, I'll let Actually, you, I, you, I was talking to you earlier about them. I, yeah. I think they're brilliant, so you might share them. So with the, these were six principles that were shared by the equivalent of the NHS or the HSE in Canada. First one is, you are not working from home. You are at your home during a crisis trying to work. Number two, your personal, physical, mental, and emotional health is far more important than anything else right now. Third one, you should not try to compensate for lost productivity by working longer hours. I think we can all attest to that one. Fourthly, you will be kind to yourself and not judge how you are coping based upon how you see others coping. And then the boomerang comes. Number five, you will be kind to others and not judge how they are coping based upon how you are coping. And then the sixth one is really important. Your team's success will not be measured the same way as it was when things were normal. And I think the message here for all of the folks who are in the early days of, they're in week eight, week nine of dipping their toe in the water. Okay, if you think that in seven or eight weeks, you can take a corporate mindset and shift it a complete 180 degrees, you are delusional. It simply isn't going to happen. It takes years to build a culture where everybody is focused um, uh, on, on delivering remotely. It takes years to build a level of trust in the organization and trust in the people and then trust in the way the organization works. So if anybody's sitting out there judging it now saying, ah, geez, it really hasn't worked for us, that would be all back in the office. Uh, you're going to end up in a very, very interesting world because what we'll see is companies that go back to the office are going back with, and they're making a conscious decision to layer an extra burdensome cost on their books. And what's going to happen to the upstarts and the people knocking on the door and stealing their customers and stealing their employees, they're going to be essentially attacking the same market without that burdensome cost. And at the end of the day, right, if you have a lower cost structure and you have a more attractive product, be it looking for people or, or, or developing a product, you're, you're more than likely going to win. So it's, you know, there's a huge emphasis now is going to be shifted onto the CFOs of the world. So CFOs, and to, to what Patrick was saying earlier on, you know, are, are going to have to go look at it as the cost, not the cost per square foot any longer, it's the cost per, per, per square foot per person. And suddenly, it's 3x what it used to be. So if what Patrick was saying is 30%, 30 to 40% occupancy, suddenly, your real estate cost has ballooned by you know, a couple of hundred percent per person when you break it down to a per person cost. And that's a very stark reality. And that's what people, I think these are the things that companies and CFOs and C-suite folks need to address. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, that, that's the basis of it, isn't it? Is that like we've, you know, the way, the way large business have always thought about real estate and offices and all that is, you know, oh, we pay per square foot, you know, how many physical bodies can we get in there? You know, and it really, you know, that's been the equation. Whereas like, now you're just finding that, I mean, you know, it, it probably is going to come back to, yeah, you're, you, it's going to be a kind of a cost per employee thing. And for old school businesses, that cost is going to be large because it's going to be based on, you know, physical rents and stuff like that. Whereas companies that are smart about it, you know, that cost per employee, like will be lower. But at the same time, as you said, it's not, it's not like, I think there used to be a kind of a perception around, around uh, remote working that, Oh, it's to save money. You know, we, 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 we have people working in offices at home. Sure. For all that's purposes, it's free. But like, clearly the scenario is going to be that, you know, even if people do work from home, you know, companies are going to have to start resourcing that in terms of, you know, whether it's furniture or technology or wellness or, you know, paying for Wi-Fi for the houses or whatever. So it's that balancing act really, isn't it? Of, of, of trying to work it out. Just interesting for the rest of the panel. I mean, what John has said there about, you know, this whole thing of, you know, the way remote working used to be done. And I guess based in this world where, where, you know, it's hard to predict more than two weeks out. I'd just be interested, like Gavin, in your case, do you see, do you see the remote working of up till now 
is that going to be very different than the remote work, the way teamwork looks at remote working going forward? Um, yeah, I suppose what it, you know again, what it does do, it, it opens up, I, I suppose, more thought uh, around uh, for individuals first of all who who, who have experienced uh, working at home. But again, I, uh, John's point is absolutely well made. It's it's not remote working in, in the sense that. Uh, it's it's just using a different location to to complete their work at this point in time. I think uh, for us, I would say it's probably going to be uh, increasing the blend for people in terms of coming to the office and then working from home to uh, further the balance between their 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 work and their 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 home uh, commitments. So therefore, I think that's going to be an, an increased factor for us. We've always had uh, you know a working from home policy for people to allow them to manage and balance their personal commitments and, and, their, and their work commitments. Um, and that has worked out very, very well. I think this is going to see an increased use of that, which I think is another, you know, it's another variation in terms of, of the, the location in which people work. Uh, again, I would say that, you know, us as a company, we, we also need, we, we've done a lot of an investment in terms of looking at our communication with our, with our staff over the last six and eight weeks to ensure that we have, uh, everybody feels, I suppose, Working remotely um, is, is not for everybody, uh, and working from home is not for everybody, uh, depending on their, their personal circumstances. It's also a factor from a psychological standpoint that some people are, it just doesn't suit them from um, the, the social aspect, the yeah. psychological aspect of, of isolation sometimes can be, can be felt. So as employers, it's incumbent upon uh, employers to make sure that the right support is there for staff, uh, to, to enable them to communicate correctly, with each other, with their peers, uh, to be able to bounce ideas off whenever that is in terms of knowledge work where people need to be able to communicate and collaborate together in order to actually complete the tasks that, that they have within their job. So for me, I suppose the whole aspect of looking at this is there's about, there's you know there's three probably components. One is the, is the job effective and can the job be effective when it's done remotely? And a lot of the research is showing that. I suppose the, the second piece is then uh, the, the, the well-being for the individual. Um, is something that you know we are, are looking at in terms of having uh, daily stand-ups, one-to-ones, meetings with their peers, and also then uh, meetings with their, with their team lead. And then the third piece then is is actually the uh, the balance, the work-life balance. So again, not compensating for for uh, more hours uh, because you know there's, there's less productivity because there's more interruptions at, at, at the moment. And I suppose the other thing with that 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 balance is flexing the hours to meet the, the needs of the individual. So nine to five is not the, the, the normal hours for, for anybody, really, uh, you know, now. Um, and working from home, it, it, it never was and it probably never will be the, 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 the correct flexible hours. So the flexibility to manage that, that work-life balance, uh, the, the personal well-being, and obviously the job effectiveness has to be looked at uh, any scenario going forward. Yeah. Karen, like interested, you know, I mean, I suppose from your point of view, you know, you, you, you're talking to companies, you know, from an employment perspective. Mm. And like, I suppose I'm kind of interested, do you see, do you think going forward, and I mean, look, you work with some brilliant companies, but do you think going forward, like, is this going to be more of a factor in, you know, when companies are looking to hire people first day, like, you know, for the most part, are they going to be, like, are, are, is there, how would I put it? Like, is there, is there, are people, are companies going to look at hiring people remotely and are they going to take into account that there's, you know, there's a skill set in it or is it going to be very much like, you know, we want to hire you um, and we just don't want to put you into an office. You know what I mean? Or, or she's just, yeah. just curious about that whole space that you play in like. Yeah, well, so like a BC before COVID, um, we were t talking to lots of clients and um, employers and, you know, a lot of them very resistant to flexible work and remote work. Um, just, you know, can't do it. Technology, security, communications, all the excuses under the, in the book. And now talking to the same clients, they, because they've been forced to do it now, they are thinking differently about remote work. Um, you know, for the near future, we're not going to go, be able to go back to normal working anyway. So... Uh, they're thinking about changing the way they're going to be hiring and uh, their setup. Um, I think when it comes to hiring people, primarily it will be, can the person do the job? Um, have they got the experience and qualifications to do it? 
but that will certainly be something that they will be asking now. Um, you know, do you like working remotely? What is your uh, motivation for working from home? Um, you know, how do you communicate? Are you a good team player? Are you good with technology? Are you adaptable? Are you a quick thinker? Those kind of things that you need to be able to do, you know, be very reliable, self-motivated. You need to have all those things as a remote worker because you don't have somebody sitting on your shoulder um, looking over your work as you might have in a, in a physical space. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, the changes are definitely going to be for the better, I think, in the flexible workspace. Um, it's just a case of companies now getting the scaffolding around the, the remote work that they are, are, are doing, you know, and getting the right policy, procedure, communications, yeah. primarily policy, and it, all of that, like, you know, and, yeah. and as uh, Gavin alluded to as well, keeping the mental health side of things as well uh, to the forefront. Absolutely. I think on your point there, Karen, I, I can't remember, I was on a webinar last week and somebody had an interesting point, which is, you know, one of the biggest one of the biggest disconnects here is, you know, the companies that are, you know, the companies that are, that I suppose have a very old fashioned way of looking at productivity and looking at performance, you know, that they still think of productivity and performance being somebody who sat at their desk for 37 and a half hours, as opposed to somebody, you know, without, without an obvious plug here for Gavin, you know, but somebody who's working through a task list, you know, in a fantastic piece of software like teamwork where, you know, they're, their, their performance and their productivity is being measured on achieving activity and achieving results, you know. And I mean, because in that world, you know, here is a list of stuff you have to achieve this week. We trust you in order to do it whatever way you see fit. That seems to be kind of, you know, that, that would be a modern way of looking at it. Um, yeah. Paddy, I'd like, to, I'd like to go on to something there that, that, that Aaron and, and Gavin alluded to, which is like, this whole thing of, you know, I mean, for all of us as, as employers and as leaders in companies, like that, that whole mental health and that whole, I guess, you know, that the one big disadvantage with the, um, the one big disadvantage with this whole thing is the, the camaraderie, the human interaction, the, you know, the, the non-work stuff, the company culture, you know, we've all, we all work for companies who really, you know, try to look after their employees really, really well. And now suddenly, you know, they're just spread out. I mean, from a dog pet's point of view, like you're a very tight knit team. And I, I'm just kind of curious, you know, have you found, have you found like, you know, do you have to put a lot more effort into, into kind of making the communicating with the individual team members, keeping an eye on them in terms of like, I know Jake, obviously who, who we interact with a lot. There, there are points where he's, working on all cylinders and then there are points where you just see as a social animal you know you kind of feel like he's he's like the tiger king he's caged you know just curious like from from your i mean i'm sure your experience is kind of the same as mine like how have you found that part of this whole thing you know keeping an eye and making sure that your own gang are staying sane like yeah i i think we, we were thinking of certainly the whole thing in terms of a few phases and definitely in that first phase we needed a lot more touch points as a team you know like sort of checking in once a day when people were just like this was all new and it was like you know whereas now as people settle into it we kind of have you know maybe three touch points in a week and one of the like i always felt as a ceo that i need to like say something in these calls because like you know i'm in the room and where it put on the wednesday call like um that there is there is no agenda there is nothing to say we're just hanging out uh for half an hour at lunchtime just like bantering yeah. and uh and uh and people just people just like that little thing um i think the other thing as well is you know because we tend to interact like we do have different teams and that there was this kind of Stylization that came a bit more pronounced because you weren't sort of meeting up a little bit. So what we did one we did one thing that was just great crack, uh, which is we, we decided to have an internal company virtual hackathon where we got the entire team just working on one thing for an entire day. And uh, we had the Slack group going and we had to get to an outcome. And people just loved that kind of like shared kind of um, yeah. purpose and mission of, of achieving something together in a remote way and, and seeing what we were capable of achieving as an entire team 
And so kind of introducing a couple of little things like that have, have really sort of sustained us and our, our sort of team team culture, if you like, you know, sort of yeah. having these kind of set points during the week, but also having these kind of, you know, these kind of internal hackathon things, which are probably like we were meant to have a big company off site. And like, like we were sort of saying, well, that's not going to work as, as well. Like we will do some stuff like that, but how can we do stuff that's interesting and interactive and, you know, um, you know, sort of, uh, uh, like working on this one Google Docs. And I remember like we had 17 people working on this one Google Docs presentation because uh, you can see it in total view mode and you could just see clickety clicks going everywhere. And I was like, Jesus, we have never. And this document we produced at the end of the day, which was to reimagine our strategy going forward was just phenomenal. And everyone just felt great after it. And it was such a buzz. And I was like, we never did anything like that when we were in doc. You know, we, you, yes, we hit the whiteboards for a day. But this was kind of an in, a different, interesting experience for us that, that made us feel great. And um, so I love this idea of this internal virtual hackathon once a month to just co-tackle a problem. I mean, so we're doing another one uh, next week it's on, a, on a separate issue. And um, so that's been one I'm, see, I'm stealing that idea. Yeah, thanks. So. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, it's, uh, I mean, some of this stuff sticks and some of it work doesn't, you know. Uh, and like we tried other stuff and I was like, well, that wasn't. That was crap. <laughs> so, 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 so that's kind of sharing some of some of the things for us as a team, and okay. and um, and uh, spirits are high actually. Like, I'm I'm pretty happy with how we're sustaining. People want to get back, but but spirits are high. You know? John, I mean, coming at it from an unu from I suppose a slightly different perspective. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like like. I don't know why, but like I, I have yet to meet an unhappy Shopify employee in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? Everyone you meet tend to be, you know, all bubbly and full of energy. Like, how do you build, like, how do you build a, a culture in a company like Gears when it's, you know, when, when it's entirely remote? I know, I know you have, you know, you have occasional meetups and stuff, but I mean, like, is there a secret sauce to this? Like, you, you, you've built, you've built, a great company with a great culture with a large number of people and you don't have all those day-to-day -day physical interactions so like you must be doing something right well <clears throat> when you say we meet up from time to time um, what you really mean to say is uh, thank you for uh, on behalf of Republic of Work thank you very much for using the Republic of Work yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's side right. every once a month <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, true. But in between, yeah. it's not just the fact that your staff are all, all not happy yeah. just because they get to visit I'm, here once a month. You know, DC. I'm too fantastic. Sorry, it's too easy. Uh, I'm going to go to to a really important and favorite quote of mine. It's from um, Daniel Pink in his book Drive. I think it's really the essence of your question. And it's a, it, 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 the quote is: um, "Control leads to compliance. Autonomy leads to engagement." And when you try to control your employee group, um, what you're going to get is a, a, a large chunk of people who will be very compliant and will follow the direction that they're given. When you have the balls to open up and, be, and, and allow people to be autonomous, it's almost like open source, the difference between open source programming and the, um, what's the correct technical term for the opposite of open source program, I can't remember. The, Somebody with a brain in their head would probably come up with some a better word for it. But you get my point. So you asked the question, why why do you, the Shopify folk that you see, why do they tend to be engaged? And it's because of the level of autonomy. And it goes back even one step further. It's trust. It's inherent trust. So we trust people from day one. And that sounds like such a corporate bullshit word. Oh, yeah, we trust people and all sorts of But we actually do trust people. Everything, every bit of information in the company, with the exception of, I think, salaries and obviously your personnel file uh, are available in a, an intercompany wiki, for want of a better description. So, uh, you know, I'm able to see right up to the minute our revenues, and we don't flinch at the fact that um, there's 6,000 people or five or 6,000 people in the company can see that. It's not an issue because we trust. And if trust gets breached, uh, we deal with it, but we operate on the basis of trust. And with that trust, you're then making people autonomous. 
you're giving them the opportunity to do the best work. And with autonomy comes engagement. Hence the smiles that you see in the folks that you that, that come into your get into your uh, into your place every month. So really, that's why they're happy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so simple. It hurts, you know what I mean. But it yeah. is, as you said, it, like it it comes back to that trust thing, and I think that that that's that's what's always been at the core of, you know, the remote work challenge. Is it's 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 not that companies necessarily think remote working won't work. They just don't trust sure. their employees. Like, can I peel back just to one yeah. one one simple thing? And I'd love people to think about the moment when you're looking across the table at the new employee that you're just about to hire. And you're like, this person, she's going to be the bomb. She's going to be fantastic. Right? And you have this unbelievable trust. You need, to, you need to absolutely put that in a bottle and carry it with you. Because so many companies, what they do is they forget that moment. And the minute they have the person on board, they essentially try to inculcate them in a very different way and try to get them to, to operate in the way that they want them to operate as opposed to trying to get the most out of the employee. So think about that moment when somebody signs on the dotted line and remember the things that excited you about bringing that person on board. What were they going to bring to the organization? Not, what are you going to shut down their throat? Now, that's a slightly negative point, but I think I would trust that people are able to understand and invert that and see the positivity in what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean... <clears throat> Um, I suppose there were, I'm just looking through there some of the, the questions and some of the thank you for all the engagement people um, you know I suppose John there, 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 there are kind of people are asking there you know given that, that you've had the experience of normal remote working I mean in terms of the question here is look in terms of productivity employee attitudes behaviors you know like are there any are there any downsides? Are there any disadvantages? Or does this again come back to, as you said, trust and if something goes wrong, you fix it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, are, are there core problems that still need to be fixed in remote working? Yeah, remote working without a safety net is, is a very poor decision. And the safety net that I'm talking about is um, looking after people's health, yeah. physical, mental, and emotional health. And if you miss that point, and if you miss that trigger, um, then you're destined to, uh, you're doomed. So that's a key element. And I would encourage everybody to start with that. Um, companies that don't do it are going to end up uh, reversing the, they're going to end up probably having to reverse the decision because they've got things um, in the wrong order. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is, is talking about mental health from the start. And actually, I wouldn't say actively discouraging people from joining, but making it really clear to people that it is, it's not for everybody. So there was a really interesting survey, I think it was in the journal today, and it was asking about the likelihood of pe for people to go back to work. And there were three choices. There was, uh, number one, uh, I'm going straight back to the office, the first available opportunity. Number two was, I'm staying at home. This is the right thing for me. And number three was, I want a bit of both. And it was really interesting. And it was literally 25% of people saying, I'm heading straight back. I think it was 21 actually heading straight back. 25 saying, I'm staying right where I am. This is, this is fantastic. And then the balance, 54% were like, eh, I want a bit of both. How I would interpret that is 79%, okay? 79, which was the yeah, 54 plus 25 are saying, I like elements of this remote work. And every single uh, senior executive in, company, in, in, in companies around the country and around the world need to realize that. that. Four out of five people are saying, there are elements of this that I really like. And I think, you know, somebody, uh, Karen can, can really attest to this, is that people, don't, people want that level of flexibility. They want the ability to sometimes work from home and sometimes work in an office. Yeah. And that's why I think that the, the business that, that you, DC, are in and the business you, Patrick, are in, are going to be quintessentially important for the future of, of, um, of business and are going to be more important than actual physical, uh, what I call fat real estate, okay? You're much more nimble, more mobile um, real estate. And the days of the behemoth buildings like, like, like WeWork and that kind of stuff, that's, that's gonzo. I mean, well, they were gonzo anyway, but in terms of their behavior. But the small, nimble, local players 
in the uh, in the co-working space will be so important to bridge the gap between the 100% um, home workers and the 100% office workers because there's a massive group in the middle and that's kind of a swing vote that we've got to be very careful and clear about. Some people will want it two days a week, four days a week, three. Mm. It, it, there's a whole range yeah. and that market and that market in a local way, in a well-structured way, as soon as we get uh, some of the elements of social distancing and we get a vaccine in place, that will be the killer, uh, not the killer, sorry, that's a terrible term to use. That will be what will make the market. Excellent. Yeah. Patty, there we go. We're sorted. Uh, we're sorted. Uh, thank, thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. As you can put that sign up outside the door tomorrow, you know, just yeah, get a picture yeah. of John giving thumbs up. Uh, Gavin, I, I wanted to, to come back to you there for a second because, you know, one of the amazing things you guys have, have done for years, and I mean, you know, it is not a cheap thing to do, is you, you run your, your grand council, like where, where you bring all your team workers from all over the world to Cork. And I'm sure there's a few pints and all that, but I mean, like, you know, in terms of, because of, obviously one of the challenges is somebody brought up a point there, you know, when you hire people, you know, if you hire a first timer and if their first experience of the company is going to be working remotely, you know, how do they get engaged with the culture? So I suppose I, I was wondering, would you share a little bit about, you know, your grand council and, you know, that whole idea of, you know, if, if you go out tomorrow and you hire an employee and they're going to be working remotely, like, you know, how do you connect them into that great team or culture that exists, you know, here in Cork or Belfast or in one of the hub offices? Yeah, so I suppose it's a uh, follow-on from, you know, point made earlier and John lives out there. I think it's, it's about, you know, striking a balance and getting a combination of, you know, work patterns and work flexibility that, that suits the talent that you're looking for. So having hub offices suits our business, but also having people work remotely suits our business. So therefore, we've, we've got to manage both of those uh, cohorts and, and both of those groups of staff. So uh, one of the things is, you know, in terms of somebody joining a company and they're joining in Argentina, uh, typically what we would do is we would... Uh, get them started, get them onboarded, and then probably in the second week, we, we would fly them into uh, into Cork, into where we've got three hub offices in Cork, uh, and they would spend time there for usually you know, two to three weeks in, in Cork. Uh, and that would be meeting, uh, I suppose, you know, getting to know a bit about, more about the company, they go through their induction process, they get to meet their, you know, some of their colleagues, uh, and get to understand more about the culture of the company and about how we work. Uh, and I suppose, so that, that, that is very important. And then uh, each, um, each year then we, we get together, uh, we get the whole company together twice a year. Uh, so that's usually we have a, a grand council meeting in, in the summer. Uh, and that's a, business a week that's business focused on uh, us looking at our, uh, I suppose our business strategy, uh, our goals and our objectives and, and how we can work you know, uh, better to, to get those, uh, you know, hit, hit our targets for the balance of the year. Uh, there's a bit of fun as well in that, and there's a bit of team building activity that, that happens. Um, and then we do that the same, uh, you know, in December uh, at Christmas time, we, we have everybody come in for uh, some business activity, but it's more of a, an end of year celebration. And then throughout the year, there's another point of time where each team can, can get together. So, you know, rather than the whole company get together, uh, a particular team that work on, on uh, a certain function, they would also get together uh, to, to, to do that. You know, interaction with colleagues is, is very, very important. And I suppose if we look at uh, just, you know, you know um, to draw on, on uh, there's a survey done by um, uh, the company Buffer, and it's called the State of Remote Work. And their, their current um, survey for 2020, they, they covered, you know, three and a half thousand people globally who, who work remotely. And they asked them, I suppose, what's their biggest struggle with working remotely? The top things that came out was one was collaboration and communication uh, was still a gap for many people. Uh, the second one was loneliness. So that, that felt sense of isolation and that's been backed up by you know, psychological research uh, that shows that that is a major factor for people who, who are working remotely. And then I suppose the, other, the, the third one was actually not being able to unplug. So therefore the, the boundaries between you know, uh, work and, and home life get, get very fuzzy. Uh, and, and that can sometimes, you know, have an impact then on the individual in terms of their back to their, their, their health and well-being. So what we try to do is to ensure that anybody who's working remotely still isn't working excessive hours. So we, we, we monitor that, we manage that. 
uh, and so and also we try to combat the, the, the loneliness by connectivity through our own communication tool. Teamwork chat, for example, is a very powerful tool that we have internally, uh, and that uh, means that people are instantly connected while while working on different uh, different uh, elements of, of their job. Um, and the collaboration and communication, you know, are the essence is in our, in our name, teamwork. All of our work is based around around teams and around uh, you know a sense of collaborating to get the job done and the sense that everybody's playing an individual part, but obviously the work and the outcomes are, are greater than the sum of the individual parts. So, so I think, uh, again, I would re-emphasize the point that you have to invest to make uh, remote working work for your staff. Uh, just by having them not working in an office is not remote working. So you have to have the investment in the policies, the procedures, the systems, the communications to help that work for everybody uh, and to combat those those struggles that the people do have. Karen, um, curious, I mean, you know, we, I think we, we, we've been talking there about that particular important aspect, the mental health aspect. Like, is that, you know, if we, if we can get employers to understand that, that the productivity thing can be solved, like, is that still going to be a challenge for the employers? The fact that, you're, you know, we're going to try to have to get them to understand that, you know, people who work from home there is a mental health aspect to it and there is a wellness aspect and that, I mean, are employers thinking about that side of things at the moment or are they just still obsessed with, will I get as much work out of this person by having them at home as in the office? Yeah. So it, it depends on the employer, I suppose, you know, and um, there are the traditional types of employers and traditional industries uh, that would be very traditionalist and, and are only interested in productivity really. Um, you know, all the diversity and inclusion, mental health stuff and well-being is just a bit of a, a nuisance for them, really, you know. Um, but, you know, other companies then are, are, are embracing that and are thinking about that. Um, you know, I think it's really a great time now for companies and leaders and managers to, to step up and, um, you know, lead with empathy, particularly now, I suppose, as we're, you know, in, in working from home under pandemic conditions, you know, that they're they can admit that they're just figuring it out to 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 everybody else in, in the team and the organization and that you know um and reassure their their team that you know the plan on the other side is they're going to take everybody's views into account and um you know that they're understanding and empathetic of people who are working at home with them i think it's really is a great time for leaders and managers to to step into that role um but yeah, I mean, for people, you know, for, I think particularly for parents with young children, um, at the moment, it's, it's it's a very difficult time for them, you know, uh, for um, um, with with, with un, you know managers who are not understanding of that, you know. It is. Um, I mean, there, like even even when you think again, coming back to the whole, this is not normal remote working. I mean, you know, you have people who, I mean, I, I'm thinking in particular of you know even even younger employees where you know, they're in house share situations. And it would be one thing if one of them was working from home. But I mean, you know, you know, four people working for four different companies. And, you know, it's a question of whoever gets up first in the morning gets the kitchen table stuff. I mean, you know, employers kind of probably need to be conscious of that as well, you know, that this is not that typical scenario stuff like. Yeah. DC, can I, can I just jump in on that one there? Because I, I think there's a really interesting trend. If you look at the last let's say probably the last 15 to 20 years, what we've seen is, um, I'm going to make up words here now, so just work with me. We've seen the Googleification of, of, of office space, right? Where, where everybody's tried to outdo Google and have slides and, 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 and candy machines and, 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 and Coke machines and free food and swimming pools and you name it. Everybody has tried to make offices look like the combination of a playground and and a home okay and that's that's been the trend what we're actually seeing like literally on around march 11th or 12th we've seen this complete flip and now we have almost every company that's trying to make the home look like a professional office and encouraging their employees to professionalize the home office space one of the single biggest e-commerce categories over the course of the last eight or nine weeks has been office equipment from chairs to standing desks to webcams, you name it. It's, they're almost all, I wouldn't say sold out, but I, remember I tried to get 
Uh, and by the way, DC, thank you for hooking me up. I tried to get a, a Yeti microphone a couple of weeks ago and they were on back order. Um, so you, you get the point. The professionalization of, of, of the home office is going to be one of the single most important things that we're going to see over the course of the next probably next couple of months, I think. And by the time that more people have professionalized their home office space, we're going to see a change in real estate. Um, I'm going to mention another one here as well. Watch over the course of the next two or three years. Watch the home builders in Ireland. Let's just bring this to Ireland for a second. Um, I would venture to say that there will be a lot more shomras um, appearing in back gardens around Ireland. Mm. There are home builders right now who are actually revising the home, their home plans to change garden sheds into office space. That's, that's factually happening. All right? So the, the need to have a workspace in what was typically or previously the home space that's something that we're all going to see. Now, that does not augur well for people who own large concrete blocks of real estate yeah. in it for a single company. But it goes back to my point where I think that you guys uh, in, in, this, in the co-working business that you're in, as long as you're staying local, are the perfect bridge between the essentially the old and the new. Paddy, it's fe I feel like it's fe I feel like we're doing better out of this call now than most. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, like, I mean, Paddy, we, we'll we'll have to we'll have to acknowledge one thing, you know, that that you're kind of representing, you know, inside the pale in this call. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, from a Dublin perspective, you know, like huge amounts of real estate investment by, you know, I mean, even even when you think of where Dogpatch Labs is, you know, surrounded by, you know, the who's who of the global technology industry from, you know, Google, Stripe and, and everybody else. I mean, you know, Twitter coming out, Google coming out and kind of saying, we think the future is, you know, that if employees want to work from home, they can. I mean, do you think, you know, do you, do you think that is like, I mean, I suppose I'm trying to work out what I'm going to ask you. Like, <laughs> I'm curious, I'm curious actually about, you know, how you think about the future of, remote working do you know what i mean i mean do you think yeah. that like you know in a world where you know our business was all about how many permanent or how many you know how many dedicated desks can we get on a long-term basis because it creates really nice handy cash flow for us do you think are we going back to an era where we're going to see more hot desking we're going to see more yeah you know we like you know we shopify don't want to take 10 desks in dog patch labs but they want, you know, they want their members to, they want their staff to be able to have the flexibility to call in twice a week type stuff. I mean, yeah. are we, you know, are, are we into that sort of a world going forward, do you think? I think so. I think John makes great points, which we've been thinking a lot about um, because in our business, we have dedicated desks, we have hot desks or flexible space, and then we have like collaborative event spaces and whiteboarding spaces and stuff like that. And, um, and so if I was to redesign dog patch right now, I would dial down the dedicated desks, the people who are there five days a week. And I would dial up the, um, the, the hot desks, the flexible three days a week stuff. And I would also dial up the collaborative whiteboarding space. Right. And that kind of, you know, um, and, uh, and that's actually what we're doing. We're re we're redesigning that with that expectation right now that, that, um, and I agree with John and um, what he's saying is. You know, I think we're going to have a lot more people say, I'd like to be a member. I'd like to use it two, three days a week. I'd like to, you know, and rather than. Um, and, and, and in addition to that, like Trinity, uh, as you know, they're building this huge big or they're planning on building this huge big uh, startup uh, campus over in, over in Grand Canal. And they were like, they're, they were like, should we do this? Is it the end? Um uh, you know, and and um, and how should we redesign it? Because they haven't started yet, and I'm on this uh, thing with them, and we were having that exact same conversation, which is okay. You actually get to to redesign now for this future world from the ground up, um, with this kind of notion that when people leave their house, they're going to want to go, you know, not just for flexible space, but they're going to want to have very high quality interactions. 
you know, spaces that are designed very deliberately, you know, it, it needs to be worth leaving your, your house, you know, um, and, and, the, and the places that are not just flexible spaces, but also are designed with, you know, you know, um, you know, with, with rich interactions in mind, um, are going to do really well, I think, you know, and that's how we're thinking about it, which is like, how, how do we design a scenario where when they do come in for those three days, they're really great, high interactive, lots of serendipity, great breakout spaces. They're doing all the things they can't do at home. And, and, and that's where we're trying to kind of think about the future of, of dog patch now in terms of how we redesign it, because I do think there'll be a big marketplace for it. And then it will come down to, um, you know, how quality is that space for, for that remote person? You know, I actually think it will push us to evolve our hot desking product to be even better than it ever was before. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Uh, I think, I think what, I think, you know, one of the, one of the elements of this whole thing is, you know, yeah, is somebody like, again, I think part of the mental health aspect of all this thing is going to be, you know, nobody wants to be working from home on the Monday morning, you know, of after a six nations weekend, do you know what I mean? <laughs> after a Eurovision weekend or something like that, you know, they want that there is an element where, you know, people want it. it, it it's a non-work thing, but it's a really important part of somebody keeping sane, you know, that, that they yeah. can literally just stand and, you know, either, you know, celebrate with work colleagues a win or give out like stink, you know, when we lose something. And I think that, I think that, I think the hubs are going to become almost part of the, I think that community feel will become, mm. will become something that actually is almost like a product. You know, it's something that, you know, remote workers will want, they, they'll want some way of maintaining that social environment, you know? Do you see, there was a very interesting, um, one of the biggest surveys that was ever done was the, the famous one that was, uh, that's referenced in a lot of the material by a, com a, Cana a Chinese company called Strip. It's probably the most, uh, the largest survey on remote work and gets quoted left, right, and center. Yeah. The interesting thing that people leave out when they actually talk about the findings of the survey was that um, while people were happy working from home, they said they were happier when they had the option to actually go back into the office and to have the alternative of doing both. So yeah. the survey that I referenced, and I put it in the chat there from the journal.ie is exactly that point. There are people who are resolutely want to work from home and that'll probably, that'll probably stabilize around, I'm going to guess in the medium term, around about the 20, 25% mark. And there's going to be a group of people who are going to stabilize in the, I absolutely must to be, must be in an office. It's what's going to happen in the middle is going to be just the most fascinating thing. And the, 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 the range of products and services that will need to be provided and the level of mind shift that's going to need to happen in organizations is going to be crucial. It's one other key point in this as well is the companies, every, every major recession spawns a, a genre of companies of startups that will become the next sort of whales, like your Ubers and all this sort of stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see what companies are spawned in this recession and will they come out with a, a, with a, a deliberate um, remote first strategy. And the reason why I think they will is if you talk to any of the private equity firms right now, amongst the talk that, that's, that's happening in the private equity firms is, is buying distressed companies flipping them around and making them a remote only company and stripping out the cost, the significant cost that's already in, encumbered in a company by being a, 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 a co-located organization. Yeah. So we'll see this, what I'm going to call a remote first flip um, concept. And the, the private equity firms, they're really, really good at it. I mean, they, they, we as a country love to, 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 to piss on them by inferring them, all vulture funds and this and whatever. It's called, guess what it's called? It's called smart money. <laughs> so let's watch what the smart money does and watch how the smart money uses remote as actually a financial lever going forward. Yeah. Um, guys, it's we're coming so true. And just, to add, yeah. just, a, just a small point, I, I sometimes uh, chatting to property developers, I mean, we're more of a startup hub, but what's interesting is in the last five years, 
it was just more profitable to build office space. Like there's just higher margins as a property developer to build office space in Dublin. And that's why you started to see, you know, uh, like with 30 developments in the Docklands, like 28 of them were office and only four was residential. Like it's insane, right? Now it's not going to be as profitable as a property developer to build office space, which means that ironically enough, this crisis might actually be a massive accelerator for solving the housing crisis, you know, because it's just, it's just, there's just no incentive to build office space anymore. And, 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 and they may even have to repurpose buildings. So that's just an interesting observation mm -hmm. for yeah. a conversation that I had with, with someone there during the week, actually. So uh, it was interesting would, to hear it, you know. Paddy, I, I wouldn't expect Tony Ronan to be running too, mo too many more uh, full page ads in the newspaper. Let's put it that way. <laughs> No, uh, no offense, uh, no offense. Not that he would be care about it what, what Johnny, some no Egypt. No offense, Johnny, if you're on the call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, guys, look, just as we're as we're coming to the end now, I suppose. Look, I, I was just hoping that maybe we could finish off on a on a positive note. I'm I'm curious, you know, if maybe from each of you, you know, a kind of a simple enough question. Do you know what I mean? For for anybody on the call, whether it's a small company or large company. You know, if there's one thing they should be thinking about going forward um, in terms of like, you know, let, let's pretend, you know, everything starts going well. You know, this government's phase return to work thing starts going together well. And, you know, come September, maybe, you know, offices are kind of, you know, there's some level of normality. We'll, we'll, we'll pretend that COVID is going to kind of go from being number one issue to number two issue. But like, if people want to start looking at this stuff seriously, like, what's that kind of one maybe key thing that you'd recommend they look at? And you can all give the same answer if it comes down. I might, um, Karen, I might start with you if you don't mind. Sure. Um, well, I think the main thing for employers and managers to realize is that the people want this. You know, um, in a survey that we did just before Christmas, 67% said that they valued the availability of flexible work above every, anything else in the workplace. And that survey today, the NUIG survey also saying 78% want to work uh, remotely or flexibly. So, you know, if you want to get the best talent that's out there, you've got to start getting your head around this um, and get the right structure, scaffolding, as I said, around it, policy, procedure. And, you know, that is with um, feedback from your people. So ask them what they want, what's going to work. This is the, the great work from home experiment now at the moment. It's not ideal, but we can learn a lot from what's happening at the moment, what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right, and bring that then into the policy when we go back to, to normal. You know? yeah. But you've got to start embracing it because it's the future of work. Yeah, because Karen, actually, like I know one of the first conversations we ever had, like people can, they can overthink remote working too and the flexible working side of things because I know for probably a lot of the, the people referencing in your survey there, you know, it might be small things like flexible work can be, you know, I, I don't want to come into the office until 10 o'clock because I want to, you know, it's important to me that I bring my kids to school, but, you know, I'm willing to stay in the office then until six if necessary. So, I mean, sometimes people can have a two, you know, they can think this is a whole transformation of everything. But I mean, as you said, it's important that they talk to the employees and find out what, like they may be interested in working remotely one day a week or they may be interested in working five days a week. They won't, you know, different, every business will be different really, you know? Yeah. I, I think the hybrid of part remote part work from home is probably the ideal scenario, for, yeah. for, especially for companies who aren't like Shopify a hundred percent remote and have always been. And that culture is there, you know, the part a hybrid of working from home and the office is, is the way forward probably for, as I said, the new normal whenever we get there. <laughs> Um, Gavin, like in your case, I mean, you know, as some as a gang who've been doing it now, and you know, you've you've got the kind of high, but I mean, I suppose beyond the remote working aspect, you know, I know you've been always very, very good with the flexible working aspect of having, you know, even many of the Cork employees would work from home occasionally and stuff. I mean, you know, for for maybe the slightly larger companies out there, you know, is there is there any kind of key bit of advice you'd you'd give them? Yeah, I suppose uh, you know. Just quickly, somewhere, you know, uh, working in an office, uh, you know, every day is not for everybody. The same way working remotely uh, all the time is not for everybody. So I think it's getting the balance and being able to provide the options for people and the flexibility is, is key. Social, act, social interaction is very important, as are the psychological aspects of, of work are very important. 
people people want those and people need those uh, in terms of, of, of what they're looking for from, from work. Um, but I have to say, I'm a fan of making uh, office space attractive. I'm a fan of making uh, office space uh, somewhere that people want to go to work. I, I'm a fan of slides in the office. So, <laughs> well, you've got a good um, one, Gavin. That's why I really want. Like. Yeah. So uh, my last point is the office is not dead. It's just taking a break. Yeah. And, re and, and uh, companies need to re-emerge with a, a greater degree of flexible thinking to, to, to meet the talent and, needs and to meet the needs of their, their staff. Yeah. Um, Paddy, yourself, I mean, I mean, when this is all done, I suppose, you know, how do you think, um, how do you think companies should be thinking about this whole, this whole remote, flexible working world, you know? What I'm thinking about a lot in Dogpatch are like we, we've taken our own team, right, which is now all gone remote. And so we've gotten used to that. And, and now we're going to have, you know, half the team's going to stay and half the team's going to go back. So what I'm thinking about is- You're going to sell their desks, aren't you? That's what you're going yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, the higher <laughs> profitability, yeah. Sure, I'd sell the desk under my feet here. That's what yeah. I did in Dogpatch in the early days. Like, you know, yeah. I'd sit at a desk until someone sold it off me. And then now I don't even have a desk. <laughs> um, uh, so, but, 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 but I think what, what I want to do is, is create rooms or spaces in dog patch where it's very easy to have a hybrid remote and hybrid on-site team. Like, so there's, there's a lot of friction sometimes in sort of like getting the video on and clicking the thing. I, I want to create a scenario where it's like, you just walk in with your team, you can walk around and your whole team is half it's physical, half it's virtual. Cause I'm not sure like, you know, like video conferencing just wasn't like we have it, but I just think I'm just trying to think about how do we need to change our our our, our dog patch to facilitate um, much more seamless interactions with the remote teams that are there and removing that friction or having different equipment or setup and having more of those kind of spaces. Um, and, and then also having like more kind of whiteboarding rooms and all that kind of stuff so that people, could, cause I think we'll sell that product quite a lot. Yeah. And, and so, so I'm basically thinking about how does the physical environment need to change to facilitate this new reality? Um, and then lastly, in the meantime, we're like, just embrace it. You know, I mean, we had a, we had a, uh, someone who uh, returned from maternity leave, Elizabeth today, who was her first day back in, in nine months or whatever. And, um, like we just, we were like, how do we make this the best onboarding remote thing ever? And we like dropped her a desk in a chair and she had like baby gear and, and like a, a cake. And, you know, and so we delivered it with her new laptop all, ba all back up to her thing. And it was just great crack because we were like, you know, look, we're just leaning into this thing. And, and as Karen said, we're just embracing this new reality. Um, and saying, yeah, we're gonna be really great at onboarding remote people especially during a time where they can't get the stuff themselves, you know, um, because of the lockdown or because they're only mom and they're constrained. So, so yeah, they're kind of some of the things that are flowing through our heads, you know? Yeah. Like John, finally with you, I mean, I suppose, look, look, you know, because of your role and because of Shopify, you know, I suppose before this ever happened, you know, you, you always probably had a lot of, companies that were interested in dipping their toe in the water kind of you know reaching out to you you know mm. um i'm just curious you know like you know what what's the one thing like what what's and i, I know there's no silver bullet like but i mean you know if, if companies if they want to start down this path you know if there was one principle or one one bit of guidance you'd give them what would it be um, I'll come back to that question in one yeah. second, but I just want to address one thing that Gavin yeah. said, just for the record, yeah. uh, the Shopify headquarters has a slide as well. Okay, okay, okay lads, okay. We'll, have to, we'll have the slide off, all right? We'll, 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 okay. we'll, we'll get the private jet, you can both have a go. <laughs> I don't know whether it'll be based on speed or safety, but we'll have a slide yeah. off. We also have a go-kart track. Uh, oh, well, table tennis table, blah, oh. it just gets it goes, it's a yawn. Anyway. Um, <laughs> To me, the single most important thing is actually the people and the talent. And Karen alluded, Karen actually said this directly, not just alluded to it earlier on, is the point about diversity and, diversity and inclusion. If you play the diversity card first, right? And I think a lot of companies are going to start doing that because they'll realize 
that their the catchment area when they really go look for people if uh, essentially everywhere the catchment area ceases to become the 40 mile radius or 45 mile radius around a particular town city whatever and the, what we're going to see is the most diverse and inclusive teams in history are going to emerge and emerge quite rapidly and the companies who've already embraced this I think are in a nice situation. They're in the pole position. They've got first mover advantage. Companies who are slow are likely to lose their best talent to those who've already headed off in the race. So to me, I would encapsulate this in, in, in one expression. The talent war has started and you need to understand, are you left at the back of the pit? Or are you at the front? Yeah. That's, I mean, I think that's, that's as good as any way to finish up. Um, look, I'd like to thank um, the guests this evening. Um, you know, it's always it's always strange when you're doing these because, like, we should all be sitting on a stage together. And because Paddy's come all the way from Dublin for the event, we should all now be going for pints. So, um, <laughs> with the blessing of Republic of Work, you can have an extra glass of wine or, or a bottle of fizzy pop tonight. Um, nice. I'd like to thank uh, Karen, Gavin, Paddy, and John for joining us. I'd like to thank all our, uh, our guests for joining us, and, and in particular for the engagement tonight. Um, it's great. Look, we'll, um, we're, we're continuing on, obviously, at Republic of Work with, with all of our events. Um, I think on, what day of the week is Wednesday? So tomorrow, actually, will be a very interesting one at lunchtime. At, at, at 1 o'clock tomorrow, we have, I'm doing an Instagram live chat with... Paddy, you might know this Liz McCarthy one. Uh, I think she used oh, yeah. to hang around your turf. Um, so Liz is the executive director of Scale Ireland, which is a representative lobbying group of startups in Ireland. So we're going to talk a lot tomorrow at one o'clock about what the government is doing to help uh, startups and SMEs. And is it right, wrong, or do we need more? So you're all welcome to join me on the Republic of Work Instagram at one o'clock. Um, with that, we'll, uh, we'll probably let you all go home now. I mean, it's great that now we're getting sun in the evenings. And um, guys, thanks very much. And I'll see you at Republic at uh, Bilty Park next month. Thanks very much, everybody. Cheers. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Bye. Thanks. Great to be part of it.